thanks for checking out this video. For a full list of materials used in this project, head down to the description below and click on show more. The first part of this necklace that I'm going to work on is the center part of the necklace, the fringe that's going to actually hang down and give the illusion of a pendant. So what I'm going to need to make these pieces are some head pins or ball pins. I have ball pins here and the only difference between a head pin and a ball pin is that a ball pin has a little ball at the end instead of a flat little pin or a flat little head on that pin. And then I have a variety of materials here of beads that I want to use. I have some seed beads as well as um, some check glass in um, kind of a little rondelle shape. I have some turquoise beads, uh, four millimeter gemstones, and I have some three by four uh, crystal rondelles in this sand opal color. So I've got some bright colors as well as some neutrals to um, sort of just make the whole palette work together um, and provide that pop as well as give yourself um, some nice neutrals to, to work in there. I have the copper, and so because I have this copper color, I'm choosing some warm and cool colors to complement the copper and to contrast with it. And then of course I also have my tools here, so you are going to need wire cutters as well as the round nose pliers and flat nose or needle nose that are smooth inside there. So once you've got your materials gathered, we're gonna go ahead and start working on making some of our pieces for the fringe in the front. For the most simple of our lengths of wire fringe that we're going to make, all we're going to need to do is take one of our head pins or ball pins, and again, I'm using the ball pins with this little ball at the end, and just put on whichever beads you want in the order you want them. The ball pin, or the end here where you have the ball or the stop is going to be at the very end. So you just wanna consider you may want the heavier beads or the larger beads towards the bottom and the smaller beads at the top. Generally, that's just a little bit more visually pleasing. So once you've got all the beads on, we're going to just make a simple little loop at the top right after your beads. You only need about a quarter inch or a little bit less um, of the wire here to work with to make the loop. So if it's a little bit more than that that you have left, you're just gonna take your wire cutters and trim it down. When you use the wire cutters, you wanna use this flat, flush side, not the side here that has the big divot in it that you can stick your pinky in. <laughs> you don't wanna use that side. You wanna use the flat, flush side facing your project. And then you just trim off any excess, any excess that you don't need. And just make sure to cup that as you give it a nice cut. And you can see it snapped on me. So you can see, or you can hear that cut. And occasionally you lose a couple beads, that's okay. The reason why I cup the project as I cut is because sometimes the little extra bit of wire will actually go flying across the room and so it's good to just keep that contained. So now I've got just about the length of wire that I need. I'm going to take my round nose and just an um, eighth of an inch or so, just a smidgen in from the end, I'm going to grip actually went ahead of myself here. First thing I need to do is actually bend this wire. So I'm gonna grip with my flat nose or my needle nose, and I'm just gonna grip the wire at the very end of the beads and turn it to the side so it forms a 90 degree angle. Or I have a right angle here. And then what I'm gonna do is grab my um, round nose pliers and um, just working slightly in from the very end I'm gonna grip the end of my wire and it actually helps if you flip your hand over or you flip your hand so that as you coil this little stick of wire 
it's a much more natural motion for your hand. And you're just going to bend that in. And you can see I have a nice little loop that I created just by taking that wire and bending it in, twisting it in with the round nose pliers. If you're not familiar with wire working, I would definitely suggest checking out some of our other videos on wire working. And we have a whole video on intro to wire working. So if this is all completely new to you, um, check that out and get familiar with head pins, making some loops um, before you go ahead and do this project. Some people take to it like a duck to water. Some people need a couple extra tries to just uh, you know, work out the kinks. So go ahead and um, test it out a little bit and then move on to this project. So here is the most simple way that you can create one of the little fringes here in your pendant. So then this guy would just slide on next to all the other ones. Now if you want to do something that has a little bit more movement to it, you're going to use a couple pieces or a couple of your head pins. So here's one that I have. This is going to be uh, the piece or the section that goes on the bottom that's going to hang down the lowest. So I've left the ball on this ball pin and I've just put on two beads because that's all I want to add um, before I make the connection to the second piece of uh, wire. So what I'm going to do here is exactly what I did on the previous piece that I did. Just right above those beads, I'm just going to turn until I have that right angle here. And again, I'm just going to trim this because I really don't need any more than that quarter of an inch or so. And this is long enough that I can just grip it with my finger. So I'm just going to put that extra to the side. I'm going to take my wire or my um, round nose pliers here for my wire and make my little loop and bring this in on itself to make my little loop. And you can always use the flat nose pliers to just kind of bend it back into position if it goes off kilter a little bit. Now for the section that I want to add above this, I'm actually going to cut off the pin on my head pin um, or the ball on my ball pin. So I'm going to just cover this, get a nice clean cut, and I'm going to start here by making a loop on one side. So to do this, I'm going to take my round nose pliers. Again, position them about, position uh, the wire about as far back as you've been positioning it previously. You just want to be consistent so that your loops are about the same size. And just twist it in on itself. So I'm doing this a little bit differently since I don't have beads on this wire yet. And then what I'm going to do is center that wire center the wire here that I'll be working with on the loop that I made. So you can simply do that by inserting your round nose pliers into the loop and then bending this wire so that it becomes centered at that connection point there. So now I have a nice little loop here that I can use to connect to the loop that I made at the top of my little piece here. I'm going to add some beads to this, of course. Um, I might just do something very simple. Maybe I'll just add some of my white seed beads here. And I'm just going to add however many I want to to make the length for this little fringe. So I may only need about that long. So now I'm going to go back to what I had done previously. Same technique I used when I had beads on my, my wire before. 
I'm going to trim this down to about a quarter, about a quarter of an inch. And again, just make that little bend there after the beads and use my round nose pliers to make that loop. Now, if you misjudge, you can always go in here and you can always trim a little bit off the end of the loop and then continue to curl it in to make your loop smaller. Um, but I think this is going to work well for me here. So I'm gonna leave this one alone. And you can always grip, you can always grip the loop that you make, and then just sort of wiggle and uh, center your stick of wire here. Now, what I'm going to do is connect the two pieces together, and to do that, all I'm going to do is use my flat nose or my needle nose, and I'm just simply going to lift up the wire here, connect the other piece, and then close up that loop of wire. So you're opening it just like a jump ring. Um, I like to tell people it's kind of like a slinky, like how a slinky would unroll. That's how you would lift. That's how you would lift your your wire here, you would lift it just like a slinky wooden roll. You're not going to do anything to um, change the shape of the loop. You're just going to lift it a little bit. And so there is my, there is my fringe using two pieces. Now you can connect as many as you want. You can make these two, three, four pieces long. Same technique, you'll just be having more center pieces with a loop on each side. So now that I have a good connection or good collection of these little fringe pieces that I want to work with, and I've made a couple new ones, I'm going to decide in which order I want to hang them, and I'm going to start actually making a necklace out of this. The second stage of my project is going to be using uh, my seven strand beading cable to make the necklace itself. So I've cut myself a length that's going to be the length that I want my finished necklace to be. Um, so it could be for you anywhere between 18 to 20, 23, 24 inches, whatever, um, whatever, whatever length that you prefer. Um, and then add about five to six inches to that because you're gonna wanna have a little room to finish off at the end, adding a clasp. Um, so we don't, uh, we don't want to cut it too short. It's always better to cut it a little bit longer and then cut off the excess. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm actually going to start in the middle. And I have my center piece here, all the components of my center piece, in the order in which I want to string them. So I'm going to go ahead and start here. And I'm just going to string them, just pick them up through the loop that I have at the top here. And I am going to put a little seed bead in between. The 80 seed bead actually works perfectly. It is the just the right length to, or sorry, I should say just the right size to separate those loops of um, those loops of my fringe here. So I'm just going to put them on in the order that I want them. And after I have all of these pieces on in the order that I want them, I'm then going to create the necklace going up the side on each side. I like to work on this necklace uh, one side going back and forth. So I don't do one side and finish it and then go back to the other side. I actually like to kind of go back and forth, add something here, add something on this side. It just keeps it very symmetrical and I know that I am um, 
always making it symmetrical. I don't have to lose track of my pattern. And when I have a certain number of beads to work with, it also allows me to not have to count them and separate them, but I can just go back and forth using them as I have the amount to, to do what I want to do. So I'm going to continue here by picking up one more seed bead so that I have a seed bead on either end. So I'm beginning the stringing portion, the stringing portion beyond this center piece here with a seed bead. And now at this point, it's really going to be just a matter of creating a fun pattern. So I may want to do something with my 11 o seed beads here and incorporate some of my crystal. And so if I decide that I, I like that, I'm right ahead. I'm uh, right away going to pick up the same design, mirror image, and bring it over to the other side here. And I'm going to continue building out this necklace, just creating mirror images on either side and using the beads that I have here. I'm going to continue working on this and I'm going to show you um, what I've come up with after working on it for a few inches. I've now worked for a few inches on either side of my necklace here. And you can see that I'm just simply adding whatever bead I add to this side, I then go ahead and add it to this side. Uh, very much like doing a two needle uh, bead weaving project. And I love the way that my fringe is hanging down here in the front. And I'm doing uh, my best to bring in some of these colors in proportion into the necklace so that they work and play off of what I have down here as my centerpiece. Um, so I'm going to continue to just work on this and get it to the length that I need. And then once I get it to the length that I need, um, I'll show you how I'm going to add my clasp. After doing a little bit more work and doing a little bit more of my basic stringing here, I have my necklace to the length that I want it and I have it symmetrical. I now am going to make a clasp for my necklace. So I'm going to still use my ball pins and I'm going to create a little, a little hook and eye clasp using my ball pins. You're going to take your round nose pliers and we're going to do the hook side of the clasp first. We're going to start at the end here without the ball. So here's the ball on this end, we're going to start on the other end and roughly halfway up through up your uh, jaw here on the round nose, you're going to grip the very end of that stick of wire here of your ball pin. And you just want to make sure you can't feel any of that wire uh, sticking out past the jaws. We're going to just gently curl this in and continue here to curl until the end of the wire meets up with itself, meets up with the rest of the wire. So you should have something that looks like this. Now we're going to also take our round nose pliers for this piece here and we're going to grip around halfway through, halfway on our wire here and we're going to just bend it down and we're going to bend in the direction opposite of our loop. So our loop is coming down, so we're going to bend this portion of the wire up. And so now at this point, you have essentially a very, very basic S-hook. We can then center the loop on our wire here by just gripping that loop sort of at the end where the wire meets up with itself and just twisting that into position so that the loop is now centered on the wire. And that's your very, very, very basic S-hook. You can add a little flare to it here by taking the end, the end here with the ball, and just giving it a little flare outwards, bending it outwards a tad, and that will give you a nice, a nice look there. So now the next piece we need to do is the figure eight 
or the eye for the hook and eye. Now I'm going to make the eye portion of my hook and eye clasp. I'm going to actually go ahead and keep the ball on the ball pin uh, intact and I'm gonna keep it on there. You don't have to, it's really just personal preference. I'm going to go ahead and grip my ball pin at the very end here. Of course, you're gonna have that ball sticking out um, if you do go ahead and choose to keep that ball on there. So you will feel that, but that should be the only thing sticking out on the other side of the pliers here. And again, to keep my loops consistent, I'm going about halfway down my jaws. I'm gonna do a little twist here and just bend this wire in on itself until I get that little P shape. And I'm gonna stick the jaws of my wire, I'm gonna grip just at that point there where the wire comes meets in on itself. And I'm gonna take this extra wire here and just bend it up. And what that will do is it will center the loop on the wire. So with your flat nose pliers here, you can you can work with this little loop to squish it closed a little bit more and just make sure that it is centered and if you need to do anything, um, just kind of work with the shape of it. Use your flat nose pliers here if you need to grip it and bend it for anything. So that's the one side. And now the other side I'm gonna do very similarly. I'm just going to trim this length of wire to the length that I need it to make that size loop. So again, about, I'm only going to need about half an inch or so. So I'm gonna trim off any excess. And if the loops aren't exactly the same size, it's okay. You just wanna make sure that one loop will allow for your hook to go through. The other side can be smaller or it can be the same size. So I'm gonna trim off a little excess wire that I don't need. And I'm going to do the same thing. And I like to have the loops of wire bending opposite directions. So this one came around towards me. So I'm gonna grip the end of this second piece of wire here, or the second end, I'm gonna go away from me. So all I'm doing here is creating a little S shape with my wire. And once I have that done, Again, you can go in here and just straighten it out. The flat nose pliers are great for straightening out and just making sure that you have closed any gaps. You can pinch this little loop. So if you wanna just grab your flat nose pliers, you can pinch that to make sure that you don't have any big gaps between your wire, your cut end, and the wire running through the clasp. So once you have this straight and where you'd like it, this is going to be our hook and eye clasp. And you'll see, once I put this on here, that should be secure. And this is actually malleable enough that I can also pinch it closed if I need to. So now the next step is going to be just attaching this onto our necklace. I'm going to attach to the end of my necklace, um, just in the very same way that I would finish any other basic stringing project. So I'm going to need a crimp bead, and I have a copper crimp bead here, to match my clasp. I'm going to put the copper crimp bead on, and then I'm going to just hook through, or push, um, take my beading wire through the loop on one side of my clasp take my wire, my beading wire, back through the crimp bead and a bead or two in the project. So just go ahead and push that through and pull it through until you have a nice loop of that beading wire around your clasp. You don't want to pull so tight that your clasp can't move, but you also don't want it to show a whole lot. You don't need a big loop, so um, just a small loop that will um, allow your clasp to move freely is perfect. I'm then going to just take my needle nose pliers and just squish 
flat that clasp or that crimp bead. Push all my beads at the end here up to my beading wire tail here. I'm going to push those all to the end and I'm going to take my wire cutters and again I want to use this flat side facing my project and just cut off the excess of any beading wire that you don't need. I'm going to take my whole project here and I'm going to push all the beads to the end. I'm going to make sure that I have all my beads now pushed together so I don't have any slack, um, I don't have any gaps in the beads. I want to make sure that I don't have any bead wire showing in the project itself, in the beaded portion of that project. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here. I'm going to pick up my crimp bead and just let my crimp bead fall down. I'm going to pick up the side of my of my hook here that is not going to fit in, in with the hook. So whatever side you're going to hook into, you're going to choose the other loop to attach. And again, we're going to take this beading wire, go back through the crimp bead, and we're going to go back through a bead or two or a few inches of beads, whatever whatever you can get through, and we're going to pull that tight. Now you want to make sure that this end of the project is really tight and that you're not leaving any uh, gaps or um, any gaps in your beading here where you can see the beading wire. So this first end is really easy, this end is a little bit harder. So what I do is I will grip my beading wire here and just give it a little pull and I just make sure that I continue to pull that. I push my beads down. Once I'm satisfied that I don't have any gaps and I'm not seeing any of the bead wire through my beads, I'm satisfied with that. And I can go ahead and crimp at this point. And just a, one good little squish would be good. And at this point now, I'm going to take my flat side of my wire cutters again, and I'm going to go in here and just trim that excess wire. So here you have your finished project. If you have any gaps or if the wire is not a uh, complete circle touching itself, you just want to make sure you give that a good squish there on your, on your end here, on your little on your figure eight I, because you just want to make sure that you don't have any places where your wire can come through, where your beading wire can slip through your clasp. And at this point now, you've got a lovely little clasp here that sort of matches the whole look and feel of the necklace. If you enjoyed this video, please comment below and let us know your thoughts. You can also subscribe to our channel to be notified as soon as we have more beading tutorials out that you'll enjoy probably just as much as you enjoyed this one.